Well, first, have you experienced great loss in life? Author Mae Renfro has, and she joins us today to share her journey of finding healing and how we can take the broken pieces of our lives and turn them into something beautiful. Well, welcome, Mae. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good morning. I'm glad to be here. So you wrote the book, Holding On to Hope, which I have here, and you talk about really your personal experience of losing your son in an ATV accident. So how did losing your son really shape the message of the book and that season of your life? Well, in, yeah, in 2017, uh, we tragically lost our son Clayton in uh, the four-wheel accident. And uh, the accident happened on a little embankment by a dugout. He was by himself and apparently it rolled over. And he died instantly of a broken neck and a broken back. And so just here with us, healthy, happy, and everything and gone the next and um, in a moment and our lives were forever changed. So the book came from that place of a grieving mom hurting um, and in pain and, and with a passion though for others that were going through similar things in life and originated on my blog, blogging about what I was going through, the, the details of the story of the day of April 19th and to sharing what I was going through and how God was meeting me in the middle of that, of, of my pain and my struggle and, and just all the things related to grief and that yet how God was meeting me through it. Uh, maybe it'd be something that I've read in the book or in scripture or a song and I would share that for others that was going through other things and saying, you know, as I'm finding hope, I know that you can find hope. And and that is where, you know, the book uh, came from. Yeah. And that really is the message of the book, you know, the, an unimaginable loss and tragedy. And yet in your writing, you speak about finding healing and redemption in Christ, even after experiencing such a deep loss. So can you share maybe some of the practical ways that God did bring healing to you and your family during that time? Yes, he healed me tremendously. And, um, you know, right off, I experienced a peace that I can't even begin to describe. Um, it's just, I was just full of peace and um, just at rest. Um, it's kind of knowing that everything was going to be okay, even though it didn't look okay at the time and it didn't feel okay. Uh, certainly, uh, I, though I had that peace, I wondered if I would have joy again. So one thing I was like, you know, I really, I just, I just want to have joy again. And I want to say that I have joy again. And, you know, God just met us one day at a time, giving us his comfort and his strength for each day. And that includes not just me, but, but all of the, all of us as a family, as a unit, just as we, you know, continue to uh, put him center, to trust in him, to surrender, even though we couldn't understand. And I would talk with the kids and like, you know, Clayton would still be here if he was meant to be here. And so we just trusted in God, uh, knowing, you know, that our son would still be here present if he was meant to be. And since he's, he, he is not, then we're going to rest and be okay with it. And God just gave us a peace that I can't describe, and it that happened through in scripture, inspirational books, music, praise and worship music was very, very instrumental to me and my healing and giving uh, me hope. So yeah. that, those are some practical things, yeah. Yeah, and that really comes across again in the book in terms of that's a hope that we hold on to, right? Even the title mm -hmm. of your book. And one another hope that you talk a lot about in the book is that God can take the broken pieces of our lives and really turn them into something beautiful as you were describing. So can you share other ways that you've seen this unfold in your life? And how do you encourage others to trust in that redemptive work of God? Yes, well, he was his, was there for me, you know, just every every step of the way. And he's took in our story that seemed uh, senseless and unfair and, and all of these, these things and have really, through that, given me an avenue to give hope and encouragement for others. And I love the verse, Romans 8, 28. It says that now the God of, no, sorry, not the one, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So he takes these things that doesn't, look good they don't feel good they don't seem good like i was saying and that he can use those things 
uh, for our good and to bring glory to him. And I love the story of Joseph. I've really you know, come to love that much more since our loss. And it's all those things uh, for Joseph that was going against him and going wrong in his life. Yet God was using those things to get him to where he needed him to be to help those people at that time in the, in the famine. And I just loved all that, that there's many examples of that, how God takes, you know, all the things that, that, that looked at. And I, I know that for, for anyone that we just got to trust and rest in that. And the more that we, we trust and say, not your will, that mine, no, not, yeah, I'm sorry, not my will, but your will, Lord, be done. And, and we surrender and rest and trust. And then that's where he can do that restore of work. And that's where that redemption and that healing comes from. But it really takes a surrender. And I think a day by day, um, just submitting and saying, you know, I, this is hard, but at the end of the day, I, I want your will and not my will. And I had to keep doing that. And for myself, I have to say, you know, think hard. And um, I just said, but I, I want your will in your way in my life, God, and, and help me to rest and, and be okay with that. That's great. And just we're wrapping up here now, May, but if there's just one thing that you could say to someone who's maybe watching and going through a tragedy, what would be the one thing that you would leave them with? Well, God is closer than you may think or give him credit for. He's just a breath away. Uh, he's just right there for you. He said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. So you can find comfort in that. Even if you don't know him personally, he is still there with you all the time. And as said, don't lose hope, keep holding on. He has never given up on you. Don't give up on him. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, May. For more information about May's book, Holding On To Hope, you can go to 700 Club. 